I was on a call just today, what's the expectation of ongoing support? What's the expectation of who's managing this after you buy it? You're going to buy this huge new private cloud platform. Who's managing that day too? You got a lot of servers, you got some hypervisor, you got some storage, you got some backups. Do you have that or do you need some help with that? Either the customer has to have the skill set to do it or they got to hire somebody to do it or they need to bring in a third party to help them. The nature of that has not changed. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Incident Report presented by Quest Technology Management. I'm Paul Burke, Director of Technology Communications. Every week, I'm joined by VP of Sales and Partnerships, Adam Burke. The Incident Report brings you conversations with thought leaders, business innovators, and channel mavericks to help you stay productive and agile in a changing technology landscape. Welcome back to the Incident Report. This is episode 65, and this is the second take. We hope this one sticks. I am half your host, Paul Burke, across from me. Adam Burke, how are you doing? Paul, we're doing it live. We are doing it live. Glad to be here, as always. Excited. Things are changing. Things are evolving. People are moving. Having a lot of fun. It's been a good week. I'm excited to see what happens. So how was your weekend? Weekend was good. Got some got some good things under the belt. I'm excited for what's coming up. Now, I know people meet all sorts of types of people on the channel. And I get to share a story about a year ago. Some people like to go eat. Some people like to go have a cocktail or something at a channel event. And some people like to go out and run silly amounts of miles with friends. And I fall into the later, later camp. About a year ago, a friend of mine in the channel, gentleman by the name of Brandon Ivey from Evoke Technologies, asked me if I would be willing to help pace him for his first attempt at a century, which is a running 100 miles at once in one race, which I've never done that, but I was honored that he asked me to pace him. So this weekend, I get to pace a friend and a business associate in the channel going after his first 100-miler. I'll give you guys an update about how it goes next week, but pretty excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Brandon, good luck to you. 100 miles, that sounds incredible. I hope it goes great. And so, Adam, pacing, what is what is pacing? Are you running 100 miles with him? I don't know. Help me out. No, great question. So this will be my first time pacing. So he's got another person from the channel who's done multiple 100-milers, Patrick Roborn from, from Solaris, who's done – I don't know, more hundreds than I can count. So he's kind of the veteran. I'm kind of the, the, the noob. And what you do is you don't run the whole race at all. So okay. he, he gets to pick He gets to pick us up at mile 60. And then we kind of tag team, keeping it moving and talking and, and focused. And it goes all through the night, right? right? So you start at six in the morning and then it goes all through the night. Usually your pacers kind of help just keep you moving, keep you on pace, you know, and we tag in and out. So we're going to be meeting them at the aid stations, driving the truck from one end station to another and making sure all his gear is ready to go. And I've, I've never done it before. So honestly, I've, I've Googled a couple mm-hmm. things, okay. like, like, many th- like many things that I do. I, I, I'll Google it and check some things out. But I have really no idea what to, what to expect. I'm just going you know, to be cheering them on and hopefully, hopefully not being a liability out there. It's about, it's about a 10,000 feet elevation in Leadville, Colorado. So oh my gosh, I, I could turn into a 200-pound liability on the mountain. You never know. But I'm excited to cheer them on. So I've heard of other centuries. There's one around here that comes out of the Sierras. Is it often done in high elevation? Is that is that like a thing? Let's make it as challenging as possible. 100 miles isn't enough. Let's kick it up to 10,000 feet. Well, you're talking you're talking about the one of the biggest trail races on planet Earth called the Western States, and that starts in Squaw Valley. Yeah. I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what they renamed it, but it's Olympic Park, and it ends in Auburn, and it's 100 miles. And that actually started with a horse race. And I think I, I could be completely spreading a rumor here, but I'm pretty sure this is the way it started. The guy's horse came up lame and he ended up just hoofing it out for the 100 miles. So that's kind of how the Western States race actually started. But yeah, a lot of trail races are in the mountains and it's where, it's where you find trails and oftentimes trails are in the mountains, right? Also, it feels like you're kind of a groomsman. You're kind of like a groomsman for a, a, a century runner. Yes, a groomsman to a wedding of pain. Um, that's, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> no, it was. I was I was super excited. Honestly, I was pretty pumped. Came home and told my wife, "Hey, I got asked to go be a pastry." I was super pumped about it. So yeah, it is it is it is exciting. So do you have like a bunch of like inspirational quotes you'll be shouting at him? 
Well, we jokingly we went on our first training run, and I, and I forgot my water, and I, I jokingly let him know that that water is a crutch, and then and then <laughs> basically we kind of kept that going. He came down to Arizona to do a couple a couple of training runs, and I think we talked about sleep sleep being a crutch, food being a crutch, water being a crutch, air being a crutch. Basically everything is a crutch. So any any time he gets a little frosty out there or complain about something or whatever, I'll I'll just remind him it's a crutch. Yeah, anything you need to live a crutch. I'll be I'll I'll Google some David David Goggins and 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 scream at him a little bit if I can. But nah, he'll, he's gonna knock it out. We're excited about it. Nice. Well, smooth pivot, Adam. Should we get into some stories? What do we got for stories this week? Channelfutures.com managed service growth exaggerated shows research. Which so interesting story because you rarely hear this. Like, hey, these are exaggerated numbers. There are more than 148,000 channel partners delivering 122 billion of IT managed services in EMEA in 2022, but only 11% of those were managed service providers. Vendors are using the term MSP to convince the market they have a real managed services or reoccurring revenue strategy. Well, this guy, he's saying the quiet part out loud that most people don't necessarily want to talk about. And it, it comes to valuation. It always comes to valuation for organizations that are trying to sell their business. And you get a higher multiple on your business if you have reoccurring revenue. Reoccurring revenue right now, for whatever reason, is the coup de grace, the target, the, the, the flavor of the, of the year, if you will, for the private equity and venture capital world. They all want reoccurring sticky revenue. And so what people are doing is, I mean, there's two ways to, to create reoccurring revenue. You either go out and build a managed service practice, or you figure out things you're already selling that can be financially engineered to look like reoccurring revenue. Mm. And, and that's what I think he's pointing out, that a lot of firms are kind of playing some shenanigans with, with the idea of, I'm doing air quotes right now, managed services, right? That's, a, that's something you can use to basically change a little bit of your, of, your, of your balance sheet and get a higher multiple for your company. So Robin Odie of Canalis, a couple quotes. Most vendors aren't really equipped to handle real MSPs. Their processes, products, pricing, and programs aren't really geared toward pure MSPs. So what they are really looking for are hybrid partners. And I thought one of his quotes was interesting. It has also been important to vendor valuations to have more recurring revenue. Vendors have to use the term MSP to convince the market that they have a real managed services or recurring revenue strategy. The conflation of those two terms has also been a problem because they obviously aren't the same, but are sometimes used interchangeably. Yeah, it's not a bad thing, but it is. it, it can be confusing when you merge those terms because a managed service provider is supporting an end customer's business operations at some level or another. They're not. And so what, so what that means is you're involved in maybe helping to do the updates, maybe helping to do the moves, ads, and changes. Maybe you're there helping the end users log in, launch, and manage their systems, or you're helping to keep the infrastructure up and running. It could be a myriad of different things, but you're involved in that organization's business. I think what he's talking about is that some organizations – that claim to be managed service providers are selling licensed subscriptions, right? What happened about five years ago is firms and large manufacturers, OEMs, we won't name any, but they decided, hey, we got to figure out a way to take these traditional CapEx purchases, right? I'm going to sell a bunch of boxes. Mm -hmm. And they had to figure out a way to turn that into a reoccurring model. So they didn't really change what they were selling they changed the way they were selling it. Rather than I'm going to drop ship this box to this customer and charge them $200,000 for these servers or these switches or this, this storage array, mm -hmm. that they said, I'm going to ship the same stuff, the same software, but embedded in that software, I'm going to have a little call home feature. And I'm going to charge that, that customer for their utilization of my software on an annual basis. And every year, they're going to have to pay me to use and, ma and ma maintain and continue to use my product, mm -hmm. or else it's going to turn into a dumb brick at the end of a wire. So that's, so nothing changed from what was being delivered. They just changed the way 
that they were billing the customer for the same outcome. Where a managed service provider changes the game is, no, you're part of that delivery process. You're part of delivering that, that solution, and you're not just reselling a licensing SKU, which you can say, oh, it's an annual licensing SKU. They have to pay me every year for this annual licensing SKU. Therefore, I have a reoccurring revenue. Hmm. Kind of, but it's not the reoccurring revenue that people are actually, I, I believe, interested in. They're interested in sticky. They're interested in, in growth. They're interested in that, that reoccurring revenue model that's going to stick around. And I, I don't know if, if reselling a licensing SKU really changes the game that much. This is going to be a really basic question. Why was that permitted? Like, why was that change, that reframing of this is now that okay? Have you ever heard the fable about the emperor's new, was it emperor's new clothes? Yeah. A, a smooth talking person comes to town and he kind of convinces people that he convinces the person in power that he's going to create these, this beautiful wardrobe for him. And the person in power says like, well, I can't, I can't see anything. What is that? And he's like, oh no, no. He basically tells the fable of, but it's so beautiful. Like only you can see it, right? But mm -hmm. it's only, it's only the, only the astute can see that only the brilliance, only that. So all, only the, it's an ego trick, right? It's a, mm -hmm. you play, you're playing on someone's ego. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he passes that down because he's the position in power. Well, Everyone in, everyone in the manufacturing side of the house, I mean, Microsoft did this very early, right? They, they did this very early, and Satya Nadella got, got huge kudos and high five, high five on uh, Wall Street for, for changing, for being cloud-first visionary. Mm. Okay, yeah, he, he created a, a Office 365 and Microsoft 365, which basically made it impossible, if not extremely difficult to pirate Microsoft licensing because every time you subscribe to Microsoft licensing, it called home to the, your Microsoft tenant and you either had that, you either were paying for that software or you mm -hmm. weren't. Mm -hmm. That was it. Like, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of other things that went into it, but basically he created a way from with the cloud to make it impossible to steal Microsoft, mm -hmm. which a lot of people used to do. You used to get these phone calls and you used to get these emails. Hey, we're going to come do a, I forget what they called it, a Microsoft is like a true up or an assessment. It was basically an audit to see like, hey, are you paying for all those SQL licenses? It looks like you're growing and doing a lot of stuff with Exchange. Are you paying for all those users? Mm. That, used, that used to be a thing. Remember, we used to go to the movies and you'd see, stop pirating, right? Stop pirating movies, stop pirating software, like report yeah. pirating to the FBI. That doesn't exist anymore. And the reason that doesn't exist anymore is because all this software calls home and reports. That changed the game. So the emperor, which was Satya Nadella, he didn't really do anything that was that dynamic other than all these aspects started calling home. And then everyone started seeing that. VMware saw it. Cisco saw it. They all started re-architecting their business models to this idea of, oh, crap, we don't have to resell licensing SKUs every three years and refresh. Mm -hmm. We can put people on a perpetual treadmill. This is fantastic. And, and then that, that the valuations are off, off and running. It's, 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 it's a brilliant business, but it's not, it's not managed services. You're still, you're selling the same thing. Just you're carving it up in a different way. It's not that, that was the big illusion. Like about 10 years ago, we all thought that cloud services and these aspects were going to put companies like Quest out of business from a managed services standpoint, because who's going to need us? They're gonna, everything's going to be taken care of. We had people tell us that. We had some really brilliant people come into our office and be like, yeah, I'm not quite sure what you guys are going to do in five years. Hmm. I, remember sitting in, I remember sitting in that room with Tim and someone telling him, it was a, it was a CIO at a, at, a, at a large organization, basically telling him, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you guys are going to do in five years. I hope, hope you got a, a backup plan. And so that, that, that context Nothing changed. They just changed the way that they, they packaged it, right? Okay. So, so that's where I know, I'm, I know I'm way off on a rant, probably a little too. No, I appreciate it. It's a great, a great breakdown of this and a way to, way to see it in a different way. It's, it's helpful. We look at partners a lot. We, we work with partners. We're, we're looking for, for growth opportunities all the time. And it's just good to understand how people are framing, framing these discussions up.
And then I was on a call just today. What's the expectation of ongoing support? What's the expectation of who's managing this after you buy it, right? Who's managing, you're going to, you're going to buy this huge new cloud platform, their private cloud platform. Mm-hmm. Who's, ma- who's managing that day too? You got a lot of servers, you got some hypervisor, you got some storage, you got some backups. You got all, you got all the drywall, you're building the house. Who's putting the house together for you? And who's, who's keeping that? Who's, who's keeping your, your yard in order? Who's, who's managing it for you? Do you have that or do you need some help with that? That's that conversation. I don't care if it's reoccurring revenue skews from Microsoft or Cisco or VMware or anybody. Those parts and pieces still need to get put together. Either the customer has to have the skill set to do it or they got to hire somebody to do it or they need to bring in a third party to help them. That that the nature of that has not changed. That's helpful. Thanks a lot. Adam, up next, Channel Vision. We're jumping over to Channel Vision Mag, CVX education to help partners improve sales operations. So a little article about an event we went to last year, having it again this year. I thought it was a really great event. CVX Expo 2023 is coming up, and it's going to be a talking stick again this year. Yeah, no, it was great last year. I'm really excited for it this year. And from a sales operations standpoint, they got Tim Bassa is going to be uh, kind of sharing a little bit of uh, persuasion techniques and ways to help partners with their sales operations process. So that's always good. I think it's really, I think it's really important that these, these expos, these partner events to kind of, I think you got to cut through a lot of the marketing fluff and really get down to what organizations need help with. And that, that goes to the partner community too. That goes to people on the channel. Like what's important to the people on the channel? What's important to the organizations that are running their own consulting agencies, their own brokerage firms, their own value added resellers and MSPs? What are they struggling with? And, you know, the folks like Tim and he's, he's over at Tolaris and we got other brokers and technology distributors. They service the channel, right? So communicating and training. And we've heard just small, short, to the point videos with some questions and answers about service offerings, getting that conversation started. How do you get involved in new conversations? I'm excited to see what, what he brings up when he kicks off the show in November. One of the things I appreciated about CVX is the educational programming, and you were a part of it last year, which I thought was fantastic because you answer questions so directly and clearly, and you don't BS anybody's time, and I think people really appreciate it. Yeah, the educational tracks are fun, and um, I don't know. I, I, I think that so many people, what, what are we doing here, right? What, what, what are we talking about? What's, what's, the, what's the point, right? How are people making money? How are we helping our customers? And oftentimes, let's let's avoid the speeds and feeds talk, and let's just get down to what are what's the outcome people are looking for. I, I joke about this a lot. I was joking about it with a customer today, but I, I don't know who schedules hour meetings. I don't know who actually has time for an hour meeting, but people still do that as a default. They block off an hour, and if you, I mean, that is a lot of time. An hour is a lot of time. There's a lot of fluff, a lot of marketing slides, a lot of hey. Here's how great we are. Here's are we are we so great? Shouldn't you work with us because we're so great? Let's just let's cut to it. Let's get the way. What are you trying to do? How can we help you? Let's we all got we all everyone's busy. No one wants to talk to me for an hour. Please don't schedule hour calls. That's just ridiculous. But no, it's I'm, I'm kidding. But for the most part, I think customers are are looking for, hey, can this person help me? And are they are they willing to engage? Or am I am I in some kind of a sales funnel here? A mm-hmm. couple things should mention that the event, CVX Expo 2023, is November 14th through the 16th. You can sign up. We'll add the link to the event in the description. Adam, anything you're looking forward to coming up this week? On the 30th, we have our partner forum, and that's an open session for all partners. Anyone wants to hop on there, Gary Schick, myself, and the partner team will be kind of live answering any questions going over what's new and also he's joined our podcast before but mike Dillon will be on the forum we're going to be going over some top security threats and areas where our partners can help their clients and what we're seeing in the marketplace right now just a quick true up and a quick training exercise there so that's a lot of fun and then and then later later in october we got got special forces coming to town in phoenix arizona with our friends over at avant so that's going to be great looking forward to that session those are kind of the two near-term near-term targets, and then 
that's it for me, Paul. Those are some great events coming up. And every Sunday for the next few months, another great event. Football's back, which is kind of nice. We do. We got football back. That's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen this year. But, um, you know, if you, if you want some great picks, I know I've talked about it before. And I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep saying it because someday maybe I'll be able to meet some of these dudes or they'll invite me on their podcast as a special guest. <laughs> but on on the tape with mm-hmm. Danny Moses, Danny Moses, he was par last season. I believe he was 90% win the season before that. So he gives out his picks. And I, I, got, I got to be honest, I, I've, I've thrown some draft kings money on the table to, behind the Danny Moses man from on the tape podcast. And I might again this year. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But check that out. A little cross, cross pollination. Yeah, and on the tape, Adam is available anytime you need him. Maybe, maybe a fill-in guest spot. Give Adam a call. He's busy pacing, but he's going to make time for on the tape. Adam, thanks for joining us, sharing all the insight. Everybody listening, thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. Adam, see you soon. Thanks, Paul. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. The Incident Report is brought to you by Quest Technology Management. With over 40 years of experience, Quest is a leading technology integrator working seamlessly with your staff and systems to achieve your IT goals. Learn more about everything they do at questsys.com. And if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can always email Adam and myself at theincidentreport at questsys.com. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time.